Hi, welcome to this section on internet resources. I'm Peggy Gross. We'll discuss tips for searching Google, including advanced search operators and filters. Next, we'll take a look at the pros and cons of Google Scholar. And finally, we'll present some options to dive more deeply into the web by looking at subject-specific portals. I want to mention how Google executes your search query, because it works differently than a search run in a database such as PubMed. Spider programs crawl a significant chunk of the web each day and index the results. PageRank is the primary determinant to the way Google presents results. However, there are about 200 other factors that are involved in calculating how a page is ranked in Google. Other factors involved in ranking a document include popularity. The more outside documents that link to a page increases its rank. Likewise, the importance of the document and its authors and the more reputable those sources increases a page's rank. Google isn't forthcoming about what those 200 factors are that comprise its secret sauce. The factors change according to the whim of Google, and some records appear one day but are not available the next. In the following few slides, we'll discuss some search tips. You can either use advanced search operators or use their advanced search page, which accomplishes the same thing. To force Google to search for a particular term, enclose the term between quotation marks. To find pages without a particular term, put a minus sign operator in front of the word in the query. The minus sign indicates that you want to subtract or exclude pages that contain a specific term. Do not put a space between the minus and the word. For example, to find pages on breast cancer but not male breast cancer, use the minus in front of the term male. Use the OR operator to expand or broaden your search. Note that if you write OR with all lowercase letters, Google interprets the word as a search term instead of an operator. In the following few slides, I'll show you how to use Google's advanced search operators to refine your results. Some of these operators aren't available from the advanced search page. The search operator site colon limits search results to a website or domain. For example, site colon gov limits results to government websites. To narrow results further to the CDC within the government website, try using site colon cdc.gov. To limit your search results to websites in a particular country, use the two-letter country abbreviation. For example, site colon zm limits your search to the country Zambia because it finds only websites originating from that country. File type colon limits search results to PDFs, Excel files, PowerPoint slides, or Word documents. In my example on this slide, I'm searching for PowerPoint slides about lung cancer. You'll see that when I use the operator file type colon PPT and and it with the phrase lung cancer, I retrieve only PowerPoints on this topic. You can also use several operators in one search. In this search example to the right, I searched for PDFs that are about community health workers on websites in Zambia with the search file type colon PDF, site colon ZM, and quote community health workers. For even further refinement, use Google's filters. Using the previous example of community health workers in Zambia, Add a date range to further refine your results. Click on Search Tools in the menu directly under the search box and then select your date. In the next few slides, I'll talk about Google Scholar, what it is and why you might want to use it. There are some pros and cons that you should be aware of. The content within Google Scholar ranges from peer-reviewed articles, abstracts and books to gray literature or items not controlled by publishers. Sources of such information include academic publishers, professional societies, online repositories, or universities, to name a few. Google weighs things like full text, where an article is published, authorship, and date it was published in order to rank where that article appears in your set of retrieved records. Sometimes a result may even link directly to articles of scholarly journals. 
the Cited By feature under the result links to related items. So why use Google Scholar? Scholar orders relevant hits at the top of the list, so it's easy to find something immediately on your topic. It offers web-based materials such as video, pictorial, and audio that are not available in other databases. Unlike subject-specific databases, Scholar searches a broad cross-section of subjects and disciplines, and the Cited By link connects you to works that directly cite the results you're viewing. Scholar also links to the Hopkins Gold Find It icon. Use Google Scholar with caution. There are gaps in coverage. Research has found that there is a relatively large gap in Google Scholar's coverage of certain topics, as well as weaknesses in its accessibility of open access content. The actual size and coverage of Google Scholar has been highly criticized. Moreover, the frequency of updates is unknown. How often the search index is truly updated can't be answered from publicly available research sources. Google Scholar's functionality is another reason to be cautious about using it. Google does not search spelling variations of author or journal names. Your search queries are only limited to 256 characters. Scholar does not have a controlled vocabulary, nor does it allow for truncation. You also cannot save your searches like you would with a database such as PubMed or Web of Science. In terms of Google Scholar's search results, you can only view 20 records per page and up to 1,000 results in total. Unlike the databases we've studied earlier in this class, Scholar does not have a search history, nor are your searches reproducible. Results vary from day to day. There are also false results due to misindexing of references. And if you wish to import your citations to a bibliographic management software system, such as RefWorks or Mendeley, you must do so one record at a time. DuckDuckGo is a viable alternative to Google especially for searchers who do not want the search engine to save usernames, email addresses, social media logins, and other identifying information. It promises real privacy for searchers concerned about tracking by search engines. They advertise they give you a smarter search, though exactly what that entails is rather vague. Their goal is to get you where you want to go in fewer clicks. The last three slides dive a little more deeply beyond the surface web and give you examples of subject-specific portals. Science.gov searches over 60 databases and 2,200 websites from 15 federal agencies. It offers over 200 million pages of authoritative U.S. government science information, including research and development results. It's governed by the interagency Science.gov Alliance. WorldWideScience.org is a global science gateway comprised of national and international scientific databases and portals. It was developed and maintained by the Office of Scientific and Technical Information. WorldWideScience.org is an element of the Office of Science within the U.S. Department of Energy. And the last portal, ScienceResearch.com, is a free deep web search engine that uses advanced federated search technology to return high quality results by submitting search queries to other well-respected search engines. It collates, ranks, and deduplicates results. This concludes our section on internet resources. 